Now we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Okay. Now, technically, I don't need to tie off this other side because there's no except backflow, right? But pretty soon that's going to be gone. But that clamp is in my way. So I'm going to get rid of it. And this is the side that still has the artery. Okay? This is the side we want to make sure that we do tie off. And when you do these, go ahead. When you do these scopes, you will see the artery occasionally doesn't get caught with the stapling device or whatever method they're using and it okay it does make okay little tail okay okay so now we're ready for the purse string okay so okay so now remember that the needle goes on 90 degrees not angled okay 90 degrees and what am I going to want with this why would I use teeth on the bell? Okay. Okay. So when they do the purse string, what's the purpose of a purse string? To tie the stuff. To um. To make an opening smaller, right? Or to close an opening. Okay. So we're going to go around this. You gave me a word for it last time that we were sewing. So this is just a dunk. The tip of the appendix into the bowel. Okay? They don't have to do this, but a lot of them do. Okay? And did you notice what needle, what kind of needle this is? Suture? What kind of suture is this? It says right on there. Silk. It's silk. What else about it? What do you mean? Are you talking about the double? Or the? Um, the pop, okay. Control release. You should control. always note that. Okay? Okay? All, you should always know when you have a control release. If your surgeon's expecting one that is not, and you give him one, you tell him because if he pulls too hard on that, he's going to disengage his needle. Okay? And then if he's doing like a purse string on here, he's going to be pissed at you. <laughs> okay? Because you didn't tell him. Okay? And sometimes he's going to even ask you. Okay? So now, sometimes you're going to see him do this. Okay? They put this down to catch anything that drips. What point okay. am I giving you more sponges? Or? Not right now, because we just used them, okay? Okay, so now I need a straight clamp. Okay. Now we're going to, remember what you said, you crush the base of the appendix, right? Yes. Okay, and then they're going to move it up, and you're going to hold that. Okay. And we're going to tie this on the area that we crushed. Okay, now you don't take that off. What's to stop the appendix from all that juice from leaking down when you take it off? Yeah, what's to stop the juice from leaking down if you take off that? Nothing. Okay, so you leave that on. Okay, I'm also going to be cutting against that. Oh, I goofed this. What's well, not tight enough? It's moving around. It'll never stay on. Okay. Okay. Clamp. Put a nice long one on there. Okay. So they're going to put this on here. Okay, cut. Okay, that's so I can dunk it. Okay, gives me a handle. Okay, knife. Mm hmm Okay. So, see, now I need a straight clamp to cut against. That's why you use a straight rather than curved. Okay. Now, do we still have a dirty clamp up here? Is this on the stump of the appendix? 
this. Okay, so now they can also do this if they want to. Buzz, 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 buzz. Okay? And they don't, cons I've always asked, why don't you consider the tip? The heat of the bovi kills any bacteria that would be on there. That's what I've always been told. Okay? So this berries down in there. Okay? So now what we're going to do is push this down into there. You're going to push lightly. Okay? When I say take it off, you've got to push down just slightly. Yeah, don't push all the way through the other side. Okay, now t take it off. Okay? Now do you, is the tip of that dirty? Yes, it is. Okay, so then don't be touching it, right? Okay? Then you put it in there. Okay? See, now the, st the stump is gone, right? Yes. Okay? Then get the kick bucket. You don't have it, so I'm going to put those in there. Okay. Right. Now, what do you want to do with that? Okay, don't put your hands on the inside. Always on the outside. You put that on your back table. Why would you put it in the busiest area of your table? Always. I on would the, not. <laughs> okay. Always on the farthest corner, away from you. Okay. But I put sponges on the top of there. So are you going to be able to count those instruments? Mm -hmm. So what do you need to do with that? You need to give, give it to your circulator, right? Because the sponges are there. You can't go in there to count those instruments. So she needs to take those and take them off and either set them on a mayo stand, take them out, and she'd also get the specimen. Okay. Okay? So let's give it to your circulator. Okay? So now whenever you give something to somebody that's not there... You cannot do, don't I even let her come close, okay? The other thing you can be doing is if you want to get rid of something, I'll just use this as an example. See how close that is to the edge? She could come and lift it off, okay. okay? As long as you put it over the edge where she doesn't have to go over to grab it, okay? And three-fourths of the time, that's what's going to happen. You're going to put that on the very edge. You'll tell her it's there because you have to come back and do this, right? You can't stand there and wait for her to take it from you, okay? And she's busy doing the paperwork because, remember, this case is going to last about as long for her to fill out her papers. Most appendixes take from the time the patient comes into the room to the time the patient leaves the room, it's 45 minutes. Now, that's a typical appendectomy. I've done one in two and a half to three hours, okay? Well, if you can't find the appendix, okay? <laughs> Or a condition called retrocecal. Retro means behind, behind. The appendix goes behind the cecum. And you have to literally dig it out. Okay? So it makes it more difficult. Okay, so now, I want to irrigate this because, now you never put these up here. These go in them. You know that glove wrapper you just threw away? Yeah. They make excellent garbage containers. Okay? So. Most of the time when you do these, they want to pour, and they want to pour the whole pitcher. So I want to irrigate, I want to pour, okay? Okay. And what am I going to need to go with it? Uh, Your pool sucker. Pool. Right? What does the pool do? Something okay. out. No, with Wait. the guard. Remember, the p that's like a diffuser. I'm going to put that in the abdomen so I don't suck up the bowel into okay. the... Okay? So that's why you're going to want this. Okay? Make sure it's all the way screwed on. Okay. Okay? So it goes in here. Now the then other thing is, this, this was a two to three hour appendectomy. You need more? No. This water's cold. Oh, okay. Do we want to pour cold water? No. no. So you'd have to get warm water. Okay? It's now you're going to have... There's a hair on it. Uh-oh. Don't use so it. Now you've got to get those instruments separated out so uh -huh. we can count them. Okay. So you either get a mayo stand and put a towel down over it. Okay, or something, and separate this out. Where do the sponges go? In the kick bucket. In the kick bucket.